delay, we are starting our next talk, which is by Carlos de Prisco from the Universidad de Los Andes in Colombia. And uh, he's going to talk about local rental property in abstract spaces. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for this very nice meeting and uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about some uh, uh, ongoing work about uh, Ramsey sets in a very general sense. So um, I would like to start by making a short review of um, uh, Ramsey property for sets of reals. So we look at the collection of all infinite subsets of natural number of the set of natural numbers, and um, we can give uh, this set uh, topological structure in, in actually in several ways. One uh, way is to look at the basic sets defined by fixing a finite set of natural numbers and an infinite set of natural numbers. And then look at looking at all the infinite subsets of n, which have the finite set as an initial segment, and which are contained in the infinite set we chose to fix. Uh, this, uh, well, this could be empty in some cases, but in any case, they, they generate a topology on the space, which is called the element of topology nowadays. It's actually the exponential topology. We will also consider the metric topology, which is a topology inherited by the set of infinite subsets from the collection of all sets of natural numbers look at uh, you know, um, characteristic functions and, and given the product topology with n with the discrete topology. <coughs> uh, well, we can see that uh, a subset of the, of the space of infinite subsets of omega has the bare property with, this, uh, with respect to this element of topology is for every basic set, we can find a smaller basic set which is containing our subset or is disjoint from it. <coughs> if we strengthen this a little bit, we get the Ramsey property. Uh, subset of our space is Ramsey. Actually, this is. Uh, was originally called completely Ramsey, if for every basic set there is another one which is obtained only by shrinking the infinite part of the basic set which is contained in our collection or is disjoint from it. So obviously <coughs> the, the Ramsey property implies the bare property and uh, <coughs> The relation between the, those two things is probably the central topic of the of the talk. Um, Galvin and Prickery in the 60s proved that all uh, there, there are some misprints, as you have noticed. Um, uh, proved that all Borel subsets in in the metric topology of the space are Ramsey. This can be extended to uh, the Elenthal topology. Silver showed that analytic subsets have this Ramsey property. And Elenthal gave a topological proof of this result by showing that a set has the Ramsey property, or is Ramsey, if and only if it has the bare property with respect to the Elenthal topology. So going back, we uh, have that and to show that um, in this space, these two properties are equivalent. 
Okay. Now, Adrian Mathias, in his uh, dissertation, explored the consistency of uh, having all subsets of uh, the space with the Ramsey property. Um, uh, the published version of this appeared, is that correct, in Happy Families, in the paper Happy Families. And in, in this paper, he shows that uh, this property, all subsets of the space are Ramsey, uh, holds in Soloway's model, obtained by collapsing an inaccessible cardinal, and then looking at the definable sets within that model, within that extension. As far as I know, it, it, it remains open whether this consistency is, uh, uh, can be obtained without assuming existence of uh, inaccessible cardinals. Um, in Solovey's model, all sets, are, all sets of reals are Lebesgue measurable. Uh, and we know now that uh, we need uh, the inaccessible hypothesis to show that, as well as to show that all sets in that model, well, uh, to get a model where all sets have the perfect set property, but uh, for the um, consistency of all sets have the their property, uh, inaccessible are not need of needed as a hypothesis. For the Ramsey property, this is not uh, known. Now, <coughs> uh, Matthias also introduced a notion that he called happy families in his paper. And uh, uh, to define that, I will, I will uh, actually use a different term. Uh, a subset of, uh, the of the power set of n is called a co-ideal if it is um, uh, a collection that is, well, does not contain finite sets. It actually, it doesn't contain uh, singletons. Uh, it's closed upwards. If A is in the collection and B contains A, then B is also in the collection. And it has also this third property, which says that if you have a set in your collection, in, in the co-ideal, and you split it into two parts, then one of the parts must be in the co-ideal. So in particular, uh, co-ideal is a proper subset of, power of the power set of the natural numbers invariant under finite changes. <coughs> so what Matthias called the happy family is uh, a co-ideal H and the natural numbers, which is selective. And selective means that it admits diagonalizations in a very precise sense. If we have a decreasing sequence, a, a co-ideal then is called selective. If for every decreasing sequence of elements of H, decreasing in the, in the sense of containment, then there is an element of the collection, a set in the collection, such that if you look at <coughs> the tail of B above a number n, then uh, this is contained in the nth element of the sequence. The selective co-ideals were called happy families by Matthias. And, and they can be characterized by these two uh, as collections of subsets of n having the following two properties. Um, first one is that they have uh, the collection admits diagonalization for decreasing sequences in a, in a more general way. If, you, if we have a decreasing sequence of elements of the collection, then there is one which is almost contained in every of these sets of the collection. And then the second property, which is uh, that if an element of the co-ideal is partitioned into finite sets, then there is an element of the co-ideal, which is a subset of the original element n, 
such that for all k, the intersection of this new set with the k's finite set is uh, has at most one element. So it's a partial selector. <coughs> so examples of uh, selective co-ideals were given in uh, the paper that I'm referring to, happy families. Uh, the collection of all fin infinite subsets of n is a selective co-ideal. Another example is that if, if you have an infinite almost disjoint family of subsets of n, then the collection of um, subsets of n that cannot be covered by a finite number of uh, the elements of uh, the family is a selective co-ideal. <coughs> so we continue um, reviewing some of the results in uh, Matthias' paper. Um, the notion of Bear and the notion of Ramsey were extended or localized to a happy family or a uh, selective co-ideal in the following way. Uh, we say that a subset of uh, our space is H bare if for every basic set uh, with infinite parts in the collection H, then there is a s smaller basic set also in the same family. I'm saying that the top part of the smaller set is also in the co-ideal uh, that is contained or is disjoint from our subset of the space. Uh, if the second alternative always occurs, then we say that the set A is uh, meager, is H meager. And similarly for the Ramsey property, a subset of our space is H Ramsey if for every basic set with A in the collection H, there is a, sh um, a smaller set that mm, preserves the, the root, preserves the finite part, only shrinks the top part, which is in the collection, and uh, such that this smaller basic set is containing A or is it joined from A. If the second alternative always, occur for, always occurs for A, then A is said to be Ramsey null, a Ramsey null set. <coughs> uh, well, in this uh, well-cited paper, Matthias showed that if, if H is a selective co-ideal, then every analytic subset of the space is H Ramsey. Uh, he also showed that uh, a, for a selective co-ideal H, <coughs> then uh, every set, for ev I'm sorry, for every set, subset of our space, the set is H Ramsey if and only if is H bare, which is an extension of Ellenthal's original result, and also that in Soloway's model obtained by Levy collapsing, now a Marlow cardinal, um, for every selective co-ideal, um, well, actually, this should be expressed in a more precise way. If, if we Levy collapse a Marlow cardinal, and, and uh, we take any selective co-ideal in the extension, then every definable set, subset of our space, uh, for example, every set in L of R of that extension is H Ramsey. Uh, in this case, it's known that uh, by, by a result of um, Iceworth, I think, that this hypothesis is, uh, is needed. Uh, you cannot uh, avoid the, the hypothesis of a Marlow cardinal, and you cannot even uh, reduce it to, say, inaccessible cardinal. <coughs> Very well. Um, to, to get his results, Matthias considered two forcing notions, besides the ones that I've mentioned already. Uh, Forcing with the co-ideal and almost containment, 
this forcing notion as a selective ultrafilter containing H. And also, Matthias considers Matthias forcing, which is uh, relativized to the co-ideal, meaning we, we force with, with conditions that are the basic set in which the infinite part belongs to the co-ideal. This uh, forcing notion adds a real, and the properties of these uh, generic reals are uh, um, described in, in this paper. And uh, my <coughs> objective <coughs> in for, for, the, for this talk will be to, to explore extensions of these results in, in different ways. Um, well, I want to mention that Ilias Farah, uh, in a paper called uh, sem uh, Semi-Selective Co-Ideals in 1997, uh, introduced a, a weaker notion of a co-ideal that is called semi-selectivity. So a co-ideal H on N, or yeah, collection of, subs of infinite subsets of N, is semi-selective. Now we have a different kind of diagonalization property. If for every sequence of dense open subsets of the ideal and every A, we can find a B containing A, which is also in the co-ideal, such that uh, this B diagonalizes the sequence of dense sets in the following sense. For every N, the top part of B above N belongs to the dense set. Or another way to say it is that um, we can pick an element of each of the dense sets, which is a decreasing sequence, and the set and, and below every A there is a B that diagonalizes that sequence. Uh, the, the collection of diagonalizations is uh, dense in H. Um, so if you remember, Ellen Tuck's result was that. Uh, Every bell set is uh, Ramsey and vice versa. Every uh, uh, set has the Ramsey property if and only if it has the bare property with respect to the uh, exponential topology. Now, <coughs> oh, the, before that, I would like to, to see how, how semi selectivity is actually uh, um, um, can, can be also uh, characterized by these two properties that we use f for uh, selectivity, but we relax the top, the first of the two properties. The second property is exactly the same. An element of H which is partitioned into finite sets that sm admits uh, a, an almost selector in the collection H, and the top part uh, with these dense sets instead of the decreasing sequence, we actually are uh, requiring something that is um, weaker in the sense that uh, for selectivity, the property we had uh, is uh, sigma closeness. Here we only have distributivity of the, of the collection H. So <coughs> Farah showed that if the co-ideal H is semi-selective, then as before, a, a set uh, is Ramsey if and only is H Ramsey if and only is uh, if and only if it is H bare, but the semi selectivity property is actually equivalent to this uh, equivalence between these two properties. <coughs> um, Farah so extended uh, Mathias's results to semi selective co ideals. Um, uh, he studied the two forcing notions now relative to a semi-selective co-ideal and uh, he showed that uh, the semi-selectivity property for the co-ideal is actually equivalent to some properties <coughs> of uh, uh, Matthias forcing relativized to the co-ideal. Um, H is semi-selective if and only if this forcing has uh, what we will call the Matthias property. This means 
that um, <coughs> any generic real, uh, sorry, a real is generic if and only if all of its subsets are also, all of its infinite subsets are also generic. And that's also equivalent to the pre-creep property by which I mean that uh, given a condition and given a sentence in, in the f sentence in the forcing language, then we can decide that sentence by taking a stronger condition that only shrinks the top part or the infinite part of the conditions. OK. Now, uh, uh, it can be shown that in, in a solvable model obtained by collapsing a Malo cardinal, the same as uh, uh, Matthias's result, then uh, every definable set, I, I, I didn't write the uh, precise statement, any definable set in the, in the extension obtained by collapsing, Levy collapsing the Malo cardinal, uh, and every, for every semi-selective co-ideal in that extension, uh, the set is uh, H Ramsey. I think, I think when you wrote it, you meant some of a model to include the notion of definability. The definable That's true. Uh, I'm mixing up things. Uh, the, uh, here I'm saying is that in, in the, if I get the collapsing uh, extension, then the definable set is there. But in the solid model obtained by that is, is the definable set. You're right. Thank you. OK. So um, I would like to uh, mention now a general framework for developing uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, these ideas that was uh, originally introduced by Carlson and Simpson and, and later uh, developed or, or modified uh, by Todorcevic, which we will call topological Ramsey spaces. Um, <coughs> so we have a set R, a quasi order defined on R, and a function. Uh, small case R, which uh, we will refer to as uh, approximating function for elements of R. Uh, this is very abstract because I'm not saying what R is, I'm not saying what the approximations of elements of R are. But uh, the idea is that if we have an element of R, then this function uh, says that for every n, we have the nth approximation of the set A. Uh, I will give some examples shortly. Uh, but uh, the idea is that in this very abstract framework, we can define basic sets in a similar way as before, saying that if we have uh, an approximation and an element of the set R, then the basic set is the collection of all of elements of R, which are below B and which have A as uh, an approximation. So the, the basic uh, example is uh, the elementary space that I mentioned before, where uh, R is the set of infinite subsets of uh, the natural numbers, of the set of natural numbers. The order relation is containment, and the approximations are initial segments. So the nth approximation of an infinite set is its first n elements. There are other more uh, involved examples that I will mention. Uh, for example, the collection of finite subsets of omega with the relation of, um, should I say, amalgamation, probably. Um, so we have. Now, instead of uh, R is a set of um, block sequences of finite sets. We have a finite set. We have a, a non-overlapping finite set, and so forth. We have these. These are finite subsets of uh, N. And then we say that if this is uh, A, B is below A. If we obtain B by picking some of these elements and putting putting them together, and so forth, and getting another block sequence. And in this case, the function R, approximations, are initial segments in the sense of uh, the first 10 blocks. This is the nth 
approximation of uh, uh, the element of the infinite collections of uh, finite sets, block sequences. Uh, but we also should keep in mind another space, which is the dual space of infinite partitions of omega. In this case, we will look at a partition of omega into infinite, infinite sets uh, and we can order these uh, parts by looking at uh, the first element of each of them. We order them uh, like this. Uh, we have all these partitions. Um, the order relation in this case is also a sort of amalgamation. We can uh, merge some of these uh, parts together and we, we obtain a partition which is below the original one. And the approximations are partitions of finite sets. We look, at, for example, at this first element of the uh, fourth piece of the partition, and then we look at this part. And this is the fourth approximation. In all of these cases, the um, original object in R, the original object in R, is, uh, in, is the union of all its approximations. In the sense, it's a limit of uh, all approximations. And we will say that the uh, space R is closed if it is a closed subset of the uh, sequences of approximations that are coherent. Uh, well, many other examples have been investigated. Uh, Natasha Dobrinin, uh, Mihares, of course, Tolorsevich in, in his book on Ramsey spaces, Trujillo, who uh, was a student of, of Natasha Dobrinin, have found and, and uh, studied other very interesting and more involved examples of, of Ramsey spaces. <coughs> but we can, we can uh, try to develop the same structure as we did in the Ellenstock space for, for um, Ramsey spaces. So a subset X of a uh, Ramsey space has the property of bare. Well, if it in uh, the top, if we look at uh, the um, analogous of the elementary topology in this space and the set has the bare property with respect to that property. Um, <coughs> so this is now our basic definition. A subset of X of a Ramsey space has the Ramsey property if for every basic set which is non empty uh, Recall that the basic spaces, uh, these basic sets are uh, defined this way, are the collection of all uh, things that are below B that start with A as uh, some finite approximation. So a set has the Ramsey property. If for every basic set, I can shrink the top part, shrink in the sense now of uh, the order relation in the space, or the pre-order relation in the space. Um, to uh, obtain a smaller set which is contained in X or is disjoint from X. Uh, a set is Ramsey null if we get the second uh, alternative for every basic set. <coughs> OK. So we say that such a space is a topological Ramsey space if uh, we have the equivalence between the bare property and the Ramsey property for that space, and w the equivalence between being meager and Ramsey null. So the three examples I gave, the, the Ellentok space um, is a topological Ramsey space, also the set of finite sets with this uh, uh, order relation, and the set of partitions of omega. Uh, uh, the three uh, examples satisfy this definition. Uh, Elenturk proved when this is ori the original result of Elenturk. Um, uh, um, the theory that Tolosevich developed is that when 
is a space like this a topological Ramsey space? Where do w when do we have these equivalences? And he gave some uh, axioms that uh, guarantee that uh, a space like that is uh, a topological Ramsey space. And I will try to describe these actions very quickly. Um, they seem they look like very technical, but I think they are very natural. Uh, these are uh, axioms one to four. Uh, the first axiom is uh, what we can call metrization, is that um, this serious approximation for every element of A is the empty set. If we have two different elements of the space, then at some finite stage, they differ. They already differ. We can detect the, their difference in, in some nth approximation. Uh, if the nth approximation of A equals the mth approximation of B, then n has to be equal to m. And uh, all the previous approximations must coincide. The second axiom that we can call finitization is that there is a quasi-order uh, sub-fin on the approximations, on the collection of approximations, which behaves like that. Um, <coughs> if uh, uh, A is less than B in the quasi-order of R, that happens if and only if for every nth for the given an approximation of A, uh, this is obtained by uh, the order sub thin from some approximation of B. Um, the second property is that given an approximation, the collection of smaller approximations is finite. And the third part, or the third condition in this action says that um, if A is less than B, these are two uh, finite approximations, one is below the other, then we can find, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, if, if we take an initial segment of A, then we, we can find an initial segment of B, which is below it. Uh, I'm, I'm not reading correctly. If A is less than B, and we take a finite initial segment, uh, uh, initial segment of A, then we can find an initial segment of B, which are in this relation. Uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we say that R is closed or metrically closed if it is a closed subspace of the sequences of approximations uh, with the product topology obtaining by giving the set of approximations the discrete topology. Well, there are two more axioms uh, that I would like to consider, but uh, first I uh, think it's convenient to give some notation and definitions. So we say that uh, given uh, an element of R, the set of approximations uh, relativ relativized to A is the set of uh, approximations that are somehow obtained by uh, taking elements of A. It, it, uh, this means in the case of finances that, for example, if we take uh, a block sequence of sequence of finite sets, we can take uh, uh, several of them, and that is uh, an approximation of some other set, but it's uh, below some approximation of A. So uh, if I take three of those finite sets uh, from any part of A, what I get is uh, uh, an approximation that is below some initial segment of the collection. And the, for example, if I take um, uh, say this and this, and that's what I call A. These two sets are below, say, the one, two, three, four, the fifth approximation of A, but it's also below the fourth approximation of A. And the smaller n I can get is called the depth of this small a in big A. And that's what uh, uh, is the next uh, definition. <coughs> uh, 
And finally, w when uh, I say the basic set N A, I will use this to refer to the basic set obtaining obtained by looking at the nth approximation of n of a and then the rest and then the whole set a with that notation the other two axioms are uh, the amalgamation axiom which is also very natural if we have a basic set like that and a set b which is this means that b starts just like a up to the nth approximation of a and then uh, continues below A. If we have a B like that, then this set is also non-empty. Well, if this set contains an element, this set is also non-empty. If this uh, basic set um, contains a, an element B, then we can find uh, something in this neighborhood. A set in R, or the, an element of R, which starts just like A up to the nth approximation, and such that this basic set is contained in the set with the same uh, final approximation as the uh, first coordinate and the set or the element B of R as second coordinate. <coughs> the last uh, axiom is called the pigeonhole principle, and it, it's, it's um, if you look at uh, an approximation, small a, and, this, and an element of R a with that n, and then you look at <coughs> the collection of all um, larger approximations, but just one step more, one step, uh, one, one unit larger, and, and divide that collection into two parts, O and its complement, then we can find a B in this basic set, such that all uh, uh, approximations of uh, this slightly larger length which are uh, obtained by looking at uh, elements of this neighborhood are contained in O or all of them are contained in the complement of O. If you uh, rephrase this principle for the element of space all you're getting is, the, is Hausdorff's uh, pigeonhole principle that was referred to in the first talk of the conference. Uh, you have an infinite set and you partition its elements into two parts, then one of them has to be infinite. Um, <coughs> well, with those, um, with those uh, axioms, we, uh, Podosevich proved that uh, you can reproduce the theory of, uh, of um, uh, Ramsey properties uh, these axioms are actually designed, this is my, my view, to be able to uh, reproduce uh, Galvin's argument that shows that basic open sets in the metric topology are Ramsey. Uh, this argument uses something that has been called the combinatorial forcing, accepting or rejecting, and, and you, can, uh, you, you can reproduce that using these properties expressed in these axioms. So I'd like to the last part of my talk uh, refers to work in progress with Jose Mijares and Jesus Nieto, both. Um, um, well, actually, Mijares is now in Den Denver University. Nieto is in Caracas, Venezuela. We, uh, we propose a notion of co-ideal for Ramsey spaces. Um, so uh, in a set like that, are with the order relation or the quasi-order relation and the approximations satisfying these axioms, a, a collection of elements of R is a co-ideal if it is closed upwards and satisfy, satisfies the relativized versions to H of the last two axioms. So I won't go into uh, reading the, the details, but we have uh, the amalgamation property mod H and the pigeonhole property mod H, that's what we call a, a co-ideal. Um, I just want to mention that this uh, pigeonhole property rel um, relativized to H actually gives something which corresponds to the property of co-ideals that says that if you have an element of a co-ideal and split it into two parts, one of the two parts must 
be in the co-ideal. So that's contained here somehow. Um, <coughs> so uh, from the theory of, of abstract MC uh, properties that Tolorsevic developed in his book called uh, Introduction to Ramsey Spaces, uh, if this collection H is closed in the topology of uh, infinite sequences of uh, approximation, <laughs> then this has uh, uh, a Ramsey. Th this becomes a Ramsey space in the localized version, where we look at basic sets in which the second coordinate is actually an element of H. Now, if uh, H is not closed, what we want to do is to uh, explore what are the what do we need from H, so that we uh, can still have uh, this Ramsey property or the equivalence between the bare property a uh, localized to H and the Ramsey property localized to H. And it turns out that the notion of uh, semi-selectivity is enough to, to get that. Um, um, <coughs> this also will allow us to study the forcing, the corresponding forcing notions. Now we have the, the co-ideal subset of R with uh, um, almost reduction, which corresponds to almost uh, containment, and the analogous of the Matthias forcing notion at sub H. Um, and this will satisfy, these forcing conditions will satisfy ab abstract versions of the, of some of the properties I mentioned earlier for the uh, case of the Elentox space. So we uh, give a definition of diagonalization for a family of elements of the set A indexed by a set of approximations coming from a, an element of the space. And we say that another element of R is a diagonalization if for every approximation in B, every approximation uh, extracted from B, uh, we have this uh, containment. A comma B is contained in the eighth element of the collection with this uh, root A. And we say that co-ideal uh, co is selective if uh, for every A and every family of this sort there, I there is a diagonalization of that family in the family H. Um, a set, a subset of the space is uh, dense open if it is dense open in the sense of this uh, pre-order relation. This is nothing new. Uh, and uh, the <coughs> notion of semi-selectivity is now defined in terms of diagonalizations of families of dense sets, dense subsets of the co-ideal age. So the definition is similar to the previous one. And uh, we say that a co-ideal H contained in R is semi-selective if um, given any family of dense sets indexed by approximations coming from a, an element A of H, uh, such that this each element of this family is dense open in H, will relativize to the set A, uh, then below every B, in H relativized to A, there exists a C in H, which is a diagonalization. So the set of diagonalizations is dense in some sense. And uh, uh, we can prove with this uh, generalization something analogous to Galvin's uh, uh, lemma, uh, given a semi-selective co-ideal of a space like that, <coughs> and a collection of finite approximations and set A in H then we can, on um, an, a an, um, finite uh, approximation A, we can find a B such as if we relativize everything to B, uh, the f uh, our collection of finite approximations is uh, empty, or every element of this basic set starts with a uh, finite approximation coming from F. With this technical lemma, then we can prove that the basic metric open subsets 
of R, um, uh, which are defined, uh, as you would imagine, they are defined are um, H Ramsey. The, the open subset in the metric topology of R are H Ramsey. And also, it can be shown that if H is a semi selective coideal here, then uh, a set is H Ramsey if and only if it is H there. I we believe that uh, there is also the reciprocal of this. If we have this property, then the selective for a, se for a coideal H, then the coideal must be semi selective. But proof hasn't been written. And I think this requires only that uh, these this sets are both closed in the collection of uh, sequences of finite approximations. So uh, I'm not claiming it now, but I think it can be proved. Um, so we also can define a notion of uh, ultra filter containing R, which is uh, <coughs> essentially a collection which is close upwards. Uh, I, I, I missed that, I guess. I, I should say that this collection is close, closed upwards it, with respect to this relation. Then if we have two elements in the uh, collection, then, uh, uh, ah, this is it. I'm sorry. Um, I guess I'm trying to hurry up and I'm not reading. Um, so this is close upwards. What, what I miss then is that, uh, no, no, this is uh, the finite intersection property expressed in terms of uh, our setting. And um, <coughs> maximality property. And then we also add the relativized versions of these two axioms to make it a co-ideal. So an ultra filter, in this sense, is, also, is always a co-ideal. And uh, uh, with this uh, almost reduction uh, property, which corresponds to almost containment in the sense of our order relation, then we can show that if we use this uh, H is a selective coideal and we use this relation, we get uh, a forcing notion which is sigma distributed. So it doesn't add any new elements of R, but adds a selective ultra filter to the ground model. And I guess finally, uh, if we look at uh, the corresponding notion of Matthias forcing in this context, we force with this basic set, with these conditions, um, within well, what would be the natural way of defining the ordering, then um, uh, this forcing shares many properties with the original Matthias forcing relativized to a happy family. And uh, in, for example, we have that if, if U is a selective ultra filter in the transitive model of CF and DC or DC of R, then forcing over this model with uh, M sub U adds a generic real with um, <coughs> the property that uh, uh, it's almost contained in any element of the ultra filter, of the original ultra filter, actually any uh, element of R is NU generic if and only if it's almost contained in a every, oh, not contained, it's, al it's almost a reduction of uh, uh, every element of the ultra filter. And uh, um <coughs> well, this forcing when H is a semi-selective co-ideal has these two nice properties that I mentioned before, the analogous of the uh, pre forcing which is decision by just shrinking, decision of the formula by just shrinking the top part, and uh, the genericity is preserved by infinite, sub infinite reductions. This is what I call the Matthias property. And, and uh, so we can get the consistency of uh, uh, all success of R have the Ramsey property in an extension uh, collapsing well, in this case, I, I don't know if, if a model cardinal would suffice. It probably would, but I can only 
do it with a weakly compact cardinal uh, um, because the semi-selectivity property I is like a higher order property that I cannot reflect down just with malo to a, to a V kappa, which is uh, uh, kappa inaccessible. So I, I it seem to, to need a, a stronger property. So just to finish, I want to mention that if we look at the space of partitions, like partitions of omega, the dual Ramsey space, then w uh, th these results uh, give that uh, under suitable large cardinal hypothesis, uh, we can uh, have the consistency of uh, all subsets of the dual space of infinite partitions of omega are uh, Ramsey in this uh, more general context. And I will finish with that. Very nice talk, especially appropriate since Mark Pass is celebrating his 70th birthday and we're celebrating it with him. So remembering those questions. Are there any questions? I don't want to saturate the meeting with my reminiscences, <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, could I draw attention to the fact that my dissertation of 1968 has now been scanned and it's on my website? in Cambridge, so anyone who's interested can ask <coughs> a link. <laughs> well, by the way, the, the notion of capturing a dense set that is in your dissertation is crucial to prove this version of uh, Galvin's lemma. Um, uh, and the, the, the fact that the forcing M sub H has the nice, these nice properties. Yeah, okay, questions? <laughs> yes? So, do you ever have some result about which would say that <coughs> the selective ultra filters you define for all these spaces correspond exactly to generic ultra filters for for some um, I think that's a um, yeah uh, th that's what I suspect and I think we can prove that but this is still in progress and some uh, there are some things that are, uh, have to be checked but I think this uh, uh, mm, we get that result, and then there are many uh, these other spaces that satisfy the, these axioms that I didn't mention. For example, uh, um, things coming from um, variable words and, and sequences of finite variable words that would also be treated in a similar way, and, and you get some consistency results about those uh, combinatorial spaces from this general framework. Maybe a naive question that everybody knows the answer to. But is there a local version of this? Is there a local transit theory of you know, the reinforcing with, 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 with a measure? Yeah, with a measure. These various versions of Matthias forcing, but it's um, not strictly forcing, so there must be some other local. Yeah, uh, probably, but I, I haven't really looked into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, other questions? Ah, well, in this case, let us again thank Carlos for the statement. <laughs>